Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is Jacqueline Jackson. I'm a fine artist, among other things. Um, I'm still working on my Roman Schmall collection. So as you can tell, here's where we are so far. And I've been deciding to open these a little bit at a time. If you have looked at the previous videos, then you would have definitely seen the open box and swatching of this set, which is the wood box set by Roman Schmall, and I will link that below. I love this set. I got it for my birthday and I'm just thrilled with it. And that was my first introduction to Roman Schmall. So it's been a great one. Since then, I have literally been adding colors and I'm going to add them to my sheets today because I have a bunch of them to go through. So we have all of these to go through, which I won't be opening today. I'm kind of taking them step by step and video by video so that I can get really acquainted with the colors. But while I'm here, let me just swatch out these two since I'm already this far and I have the, um, I have my sheets ready to go. This is the Potter's Pink. And I have to say, as I said in the previous video, and I did um, a painting with it, this is the prettiest Potter's Pink and the smoothest and creamiest Potter's Pink that I have ever painted with. It is so beautiful. So you can see the example in the video um, previously on the channel. And that is PR233 and it is granulating. So exciting. I know. I love it. Um, Cobalt Blue Deep is the other one. And this is PB74. Also a granulating color. You can see it's uh, it re-wets really well. There's different. You can go really light or you can get a lot more color in there. I just love this. I think this is just such a beautiful color and it just granulates like crazy. It's a great mixing color as well. So I found that both of these mix up really well with different, um, different tones. And then, so it gives you a lot of options, you know? So today I'm going to take a look. Oh, where's the Quinn Fuchsia? Oh, what happened to my Quinn Fuchsia? I think I put it into a box. I'll have to look for it later. I don't want to waste your time. So Let's do Ultramarine Intense. These are so, I mean, the colors are so beautiful. I mean, you can see these are the swatches so far. Paraline Green is amazing. This Prisbiz, Prisbiz Gray is so cool. Um, there's, there's definitely ones in here that I just don't have in any other set. The lavender is way better than the Daniel Smith's lavender, which is just mixed with white. And it's just, I don't know. It's like icky. It's like, uh, it's just pasty. It's weird. Their cobalt blues, their French ultras are amazing. This Quin Quinacridone magenta is like my favorite one. I love it. Um, I actually did something with, um, Tundra's Pink, which is a super granulating color by Schmincke and Perline Maroon recently, and it turned out amazing. I also really love their Nickel Azo Yellow. Um, other ones that I've been really impressed with are the Pyro Red and the Scarlet Red, both gorgeous reds, and even Scarlet Lake is so nice. So you, in this set, in the wood box set, you actually get these really good range of colors, right? Just included in the set. Manganese Violet is awesome mineral violet is like one of my favorite shadow violet even more beautiful and this ocean blue i mean like i could literally not almost not do without any of them even the carpet modem is so pretty so well done <laughs> well done i really love the roman schmall paints i'm thrilled with them and i can't even um let me put my swatches over here i can't even tell you like you know for me to go back and order more when I have so much paint then you know I'm pretty happy with it so I am uh, gonna open these hopefully not rip my wrappers because I need to glue these down this is ultramarine intense and it is um, PB 29 which is you know pretty standard for ultramarine thing is, is I'm curious about intense, you know, like what is the difference between this one and this 
French ultramarine that isn't here. This is uh, one of their newer colors, I believe. 254. It looks very similar to the French Ultra. Maybe a little more, yeah, definitely a little more purple, maybe. A little more purple cast. Pretty cool. So let me know your experience with these paints. And um, I should probably label them. And what have been your favorite colors so far? You know, I'm really curious. So this is Ultra intense and it is pb29 i find it just easier to um roman schmal i find it easier just to label them as i go because otherwise i can i can mix them up and forget the only thing good is that they have these very specific um little pans that are really nice quality pans so I can kind of tell the difference between those and the ones that I just order from open stock this one is number 215 and it's PR 259 and it's called ultramarine pink so I thought I would do the ultramarines this time I wrote them down here so that I can swatch them on my sketchbook. This is the uh, Hamula. What is it? Hamula? This is really pretty too. This looks a lot like the uh, Quinacridone Magenta, but I'm sure it's more purple. So my Hannah Mula jeweler, uh, my Hannah Mula journal is a custom made journal that I did. And um, I really love it. It's great. 100% cotton. You know, how can you go wrong? I now make these uh, from the Arches paper and my Hannah Mueller paper. And I'm a happy camper because I have 100% cotton sketchbooks all the time now that I can customize in other words I can um, this is granulating I can easily easily customize them and how I customize them is kind of interesting I guess it's like I when I lay the pages down before I sew them or glue them in I actually decide how many I want facing like this is uh, one side of the paper and then the other side of the paper, right? So like you can actually decide when you make your own journals whether you want a lot of cotton on like the front side of the paper facing each other. So you have that like many opportunities to do full scapes without there being, you know what I mean? Like differences in the paper because the front and back of paper is always different even in really excellent paper. So I can kind of uh, match them up and decide which ones I want to uh, have open. Okay, so I got these open. Got one more. This is the Ultramarine Violet. I was excited to get these. I'm actually excited for all of them. I just, I just want to take my time opening them, you know, because otherwise... I get so much paint in that often I forget what I have and I don't want to forget what I have. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't want to forget. So this one is PB15. Interesting. All right. Can't wait to swatch these, right? Excited. So Ultramarine Intense is PB29. So in this journal, and if you want at the end here, I can give you a little tour of this journal. This journal is one that I teach lessons out of. And just recently finished another big class. This one is for Skillshare. I'll give you more 
uh, later, but this is basically what I filmed. So this is all in granulating and how to do it with basically one stroke and you get like this beautiful granulation. So I talk a lot about how to get the best granulating um, presence out of your paints and how to layer them and do, you know, different things like this. It's a really nice class and these don't take very long. They're really easy to learn. So my, and this was another class I did that's up right now that is um, just go to JacquelineJacks.com and look for the classes and you'll be able to connect with the classes that I'm teaching. But, you know, in my journals, I typically have anything from ideas for classes or ideas for, you know, different sketches that I want to do in maybe larger form. And then I sample the paints really carefully, like in detail, even like down to what is in this paint, like Glacier Green is made up of PR 233 and PB 50. And then I actually put those swatches over on the side. So I know exactly what's in the paints. And that has really helped me learn a lot about what I'm painting with and understand what I like to paint with, which is even better. If you're looking for a black liner, by the way, I recommend this one. It's in my um, materials list on my website. It is amazing. It's from Germany. You can get them at Jackson's and they have a ton of different kinds. It is so great that literally the minute I put it down, it's way better than the Sharpie. And it lasts longer than the Sharpies because my Sharpies really dry out quickly. Um, but that one doesn't seem to ever dry out. I've also got some different things here for you to take a look at. And I will eventually do some brush tutorials and brush like comparisons. But here I have some different brushes that I just want to like note as I go through the swatching here. I have an Escoda. Versatile size 16 travel brush. This is a really nice round for larger size uh, sketches and stuff and paintings. This is the Escoda Ultimo 10, the Versatile 12, the Versatile 8, and the Ultimo 6. So literally these two are Ultimos. Two nice sizes to have if you're looking for two great all-around brushes to have. Um, this is really amazing. And then the Versatiles are great too with some really nice points on this 12, I think is wonderful. And this one's a great wash brush. So I'll kind of like play with these as I go along just so that I can further get acquainted with them. Let's go ahead and swatch our new babies here and see what we have. I'm really excited. So I'm just going to drop some water. This is the... Um, Ultimo size 10. It's a great all around brush because it holds so much water. I mean, look at the size of the belly in this brush. So for swatching and for backgrounds in your sketchbook, it's amazing. It's a little big for details though, right? That's really pretty. Yeah, it's a little big for details. I'm assuming this is ultramarine pink. Yes, it is. Let's see how much color it's going to give us. And by the way, uh, I'm going to be showing you very easy watercolor backgrounds in today's video. Once we get our swatching done, that is beautiful. Wow. I really love that. Okay. Which is my, let's see where I'm going to put it. It's beautiful. Isn't that like the prettiest color? I love it. I needed some more pinks, you know, and it's granulating ultramarine granulating pink. How awesome is that? That's really beautiful color. Can you guys see it? Okay. Isn't that just look at the granulation on this. It's stunning. Really, really pretty. I love it. Okay, let's go to the next one. This is the violet. It's a nice, intense color. Ultramarine violet. I thought this would be really fun 
to look at because they're all ultramarines. So when I was looking at their list, I kind of looked for ones that were new to their line, but then also ones that uh, I didn't have and that would be nice to work with together. This is really beautiful. I mean, this is the first time I've ever used it. It's just stunning. Wow. I'm telling you, I am never disappointed by their paints. They're just gorgeous paints. They really are. Let's do the larger swatch. Oh, yeah. God, it's so pretty. Mm, I love it. It's so beautiful. Yeah, they're just... I don't think I could really improve. If I didn't have any paint, I mean, literally, you know how much I love my schminky paints. But if I could only choose one, Roman Schmal is up there. It is really up there. Oh, this Ultramarine Intense is stunning. And that's PB29. It's stunning. It's almost as if they find new ways to do things. I don't know. I just noticed the you know, the pigment loads are amazing in their paints. And, uh, I was just, wow. You know, just every paint just wows me. I mean, look at that. Intense is right. Look at that gorgeous color. Oh, it's so pretty. And you can, it's not even like highly staining. All right, we're going to play with these. I'm going to do some really easy, neat backgrounds. Let's let these dry. I'll put them over there so they can dry. And um, unbelievable. They're so nice. They're so nice. I wonder, okay, so just out of curiosity... Let's get the swatch for Ultramarine, French Ultramarine, and put that next to the Ultramarine Intense. Neat. Okay, so the French Ultramarine looks a little more, looks a little more purple. Even though they're both PB29, that's miraculous. It's like really unusual. You know what I mean? So this one, it says, they're both PB29, but this one says, well, the French Ultramarine says it's granulating, and this is not granulating. And then the French Ultramarine says it is MGMS, and that's the Ultra Intense. And the French Ultramarine says it's staining and granulating. And they're both like uh, semi-transparent beautiful colors I you know what you really need them both because this is more blue and this is more of a this has more like purple kind of like a lavender blue you see what I mean yeah you can kind of see okay let's move on we're going to do some um, just a couple of really cool backgrounds so I feel like many of you all right so first of all this is an overkill for this size paper so we're going to get rid of the 16 versatile it's already on its way out because it has to be like if I were going to do a full sheet but this is a half sheet so we don't really need any more than the Ultimo 10 we could even do the 12 you know if you wanted to do versatile so maybe I'll do versatile down here and the Ultimo up here okay so I'm going to get plenty of blue. This is going to be, because it's intense, I'm going to try and get some different weights in the background. 
And the first thing I'm going to do for our, our background, I'm trying to think of what I should do for you first. <laughs> um, let's do a nice wash. So let me adjust this. Okay. So on dry paper with an Altimo brush. Okay. So I can't use a brush that doesn't have a big belly of water. Otherwise it wouldn't be enough. I'm going to go across the center just to test how light this is. And I'm going to work up just because it was a very intense color. And I just want a light background wash to begin with. And you can see how nice this Ultimo does in um, spreading that water on for an even wash. So now I have this beautiful color. I'm going to grab some more and work at the center with the more powerful stain of the color towards the bottom, keeping it way, way light in the top. Okay. So right now it's just a blue gradient wash, right? Going back and forth a little bit. Now this paper is going to start to get more and more wet. So we don't want to add more water to it once it's in this state. You want to just leave it to start drying because otherwise if you add any more water, you can see where there's like some puddling going on. So to back off on the puddling so that you don't have puddles, you want to dry a very wet brush and now just start spreading the wash back and forth like that. And what it's going to do is it's going to collect the extra, the excess water, and it leaves you with this nice light background shade. Now to add something else, like that would be good for just a, a, a regular background for any kind of, um, any kind of landscape, right? Now, if I wanted to start developing something that I could paint on that had a little more mood, right? Then I would take my intents and while this was wet, I would just kind of make some uneven backgrounds like this. Because in the background of anything, pretty much, it's going to be like if this were going to be a water line, then whatever's going up here needs to be repeated here. So this would be your water line, right? But aside from that, when this dries and it starts to blend in and you can even like, you know, you can keep washing if you want this to, you know, just be a little bit more blended or you can add color and kind of make it into something a little bit more. You know what I mean? You can even add yellow to it and it will be a green background, you know, washing some green onto it. But right now I'm sticking with monochromatic because I just want to show you different things we can do with the backgrounds. If you don't like the background, you can just start washing it away. Make sure that you do dry some of your um, brush off. If it's a Ultimo, you know, it's going to hold a lot of water, so it will go on forever and it will keep delivering color or uh, taking color away just depending on how you want it. So very good to work with. Now when you do a lot of passes like this, if you don't have good paper, it will start breaking down the paper um, and you'll get some pilling. So you do have to be careful and kind of, you know, stop at some point. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead for me and I'm just going to drop in some of this gorgeous color because I know that it's going to dry uh, slightly lighter later. And that's really all I need for a washi background that I will show you in just a second what we're going to do with the front of it. Okay. So there we go. So that's an easy wash background thinking in terms of, you know, what else we could put on this. So it has to dry completely before you can move forward and do anything else. Another really interesting thing to do in your sketchbook is like a splotchy um, background that has a little like method to the madness to it. So let's take our purple here, our ultramarine purple, 
and I'm going to dilute it down. And the first layer is going to be just some shapes. So maybe we will put some little modern shapes like this in the background. And I'm just taking light washes of the color. We want, I want something that will dry fast right now so that I can come back um, when I go through all of these and I can show you what to do with it next. So I'm just kind of looping it around. I'm doing some of these. Looks pretty, right? Yeah, wait till you see what it turns into. And then I'm going to just put another little abstract shape up here. And again, light washes for backgrounds are great unless you know exactly what you want to paint over them and there's a purpose for it to be bright and you know come back into the foreground but right now we're just going to stick with light washes because we don't want it taking over anything you know so i'm going back and i'm just going to enhance the shape but you can see as i start to get darker it starts becoming more prominent. So that's something you have to kind of make that decision about, right? Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to water down my color and take another brush. And we're just going to splash a little bit onto the background. I should probably cover that, but I got lucky. I did not get it. Okay, so that's another background idea, and it's just kind of a little abstract painting, right? Now let's move to the versatile brush so I can just kind of describe my experience here. So that was the Ultimo Size 10, and this was an easy washing brush. Okay, so easy to do light washes. Next, let's take the larger of the Versatiles, and this is the size 12. I'm going to take the pink color next. And we're going to do a light wash of our first color, which is pink. The Versatile doesn't hold as much water as the Ultimo, but it still does a great job. I did notice that the, uh, the Ultimo you can get lighter shades of your color. See how much color it wants to deliver. So I almost have to like wash it down a little bit because it wants to make the color a lot more vibrant because it holds less water. So from the start, you're working with um, a brush that wants to give you a lot more color. So if you like those really light wispy washes, the Ultimo is the better one for that. Right now I'm cleaning my brush with water and I'm removing some of the color without making a soppy mess. So I'm going in two directions. I'm going across and then down because I don't want to overwork the paper. And then I'm just drawing it out just to try and get the wash very even. Now I'm going to take um, the purple and I'm going to drop it in to some areas here. And then I'm going to take my blue. Again, this one really wants to deliver a lot of color, so be careful. And I'm just going to drop in a few colors there. And we're going to let that just sit. And that's that background. Now, if you wanted to add a little something extra to it, you could again take a wet brush 
and just splash it with some water. And what you're going to see is because it's got a little bit of intense color, it's going to break apart some of the just the water is going to break apart some of the areas and make it even that much lighter. See what it's doing? Let me get you a little closer. So what it's doing is when I drop in a little bit of water, see how it's chasing the color away and creating little like bleeds. It's going to take a while to dry, but that's another really good granulating background that we can do something else with later. Okay, now let's do an interesting uh, background using our Versatile size 8. So let me just note that this was the Versatile size 12. So it delivers more color than the Ultimo for washes, but still did a great job washing. Now I'm going to take the Escoda Versatile size 8. I'm going to grab some pink first because it's my lighter color. And starting with your lighter color and working into the darker colors, we're going to create some little leaf shapes. So just by dropping it and lifting it up just like that and dropping it and lifting it up just some pretty nice little leaf shapes now if you wanted um, smaller shapes then you wouldn't push the belly down as much and this makes a really nice um, background setting for something else like if you're going to paint um, a floral design or you're making like a greeting card just having these little layers of petals really turn out so beautifully Okay, so now I'm going to take the tip of my brush, which I love about the Versatile. This is a size 8. And as you can see, I can do the little stems. Somebody was asking me actually on Facebook in our Facebook group um, how to do stems and leaves because they're really struggling. And I said the first thing is you got to check your brush because if your brush is the wrong brush, I mean, you see, I can just do this with like one touch, you know, if your brush is the wrong brush, then it's definitely not going to do it. This one came out a little bit dark, so I just went back with a clean brush and I'm literally just going over it again to remove a little bit of the color. And just kind of even it out, which is something you can easily do. So we're going to leave that just like that for now because we can go back and add layers, uh, more colorful layers as we go along. So let's pick out another one for some drama on this next one. So this next one, I'm going to have to pull my, um, some of my square brushes, the flats. Let's see. that are the right size for this paper and I think this will work okay so this is the square wash by Princeton Neptune half inch and I have the Princeton Neptune quarter inch I actually usually use I'll show you what I usually use but this is just too small of an area for it I mean I could still kind of use it and maybe I'll keep it out this is my favorite one it's the three quarter inch Prado um, this brush is amazing, but it's only available in the Fabio Cambranelli set. And 
It comes with two sizes in it. I can't get it otherwise. It's the only way I could get this, and it's like my favorite wash brush. I'll show you why. But these are really good too, and you can get these anytime, you know? So I'm going to start with this one, and we're going to use our Ultramarine Intense first here. Try and get not a lot of color on it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just start washing up some very, very light streaks of the blue. And in order to get dry brush streaks, you kind of have to have a brush that doesn't deliver so much water. And I, this is, I can actually paint washes with this brush, but it's not really meant to paint washes. It's meant to do, you know, things like this, like these nice dry brush strokes or uh, flower petals, like really kind of obscure flower petals. So I'm doing this uneven, adding some water to blend it down. modeled look. It's just, it's just a very rough wash. Okay. So we got that. Now we're going to go back and we're going to let this dry and then we're going to come back and we're going to do something else with it, with our brushes. But I don't want to do it just yet because we have to move back to this one, which is now dry. And it's better if they dry first, because if they dry first, then it's so much easier, of course, because they're not going to be bleeding all over the place, right? Okay, so this is perfect for like any kind of landscape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a um, hooker's green because I just really like this color. I've got it over here in my um, in the wood box watercolor set. Let me just guys can see more of everything. Here we go. So I'm getting hookers green on my palette here, mixing it in close to the blue. And I'm going to wash it down. I actually don't have my favorite brush out. This is, this is an Escota size zero versatile. I actually think I need a bigger brush, but hang on. We're going to try it with this one want to get it nice and wet like a little wash and I'm going to just strike up like this and here we're going to do a really really nice palm tree wash so I'm using hookers green from Roman Schmal and this nice little rigger striper brush. And I'm just bringing down, can you see what I'm doing? I'm just bringing down a very, very light wash for a palm tree. Now, because we have this, you know, background kind of going, it makes it so much easier and I'm doing a very light wash here because it leaves room when it dries for you to do more in the foreground. Now this is a very, very small version of what you could do, but it just, you see what I'm, where I'm going with it. So you can literally make an entire painting just by starting with a wash like that. I'm going to put one there. going off of the page. Need some more room. Get rid of the wash brushes. My little rounds are we'll pull them out later. So over here. Let's see if I can get you. Can you see? Yep. So again I am just this here. See I've got a really really light wash of color. And I'm just doing these really rough strikes 
right over it. Now, because the background is already dry, I'm able to do that no problem. If you leave your background slightly wet, it will blend more, but it has to just be at that moment, you know, the perfect moment in between. So, okay, so we got that. Um, and then, you know, like you can just, you can do more of them. I get a little impatient, so I use usually use a bigger brush, but this is working out fine. You see a lot of this done in um, Thomas Schuler's work. He's a really great artist, a master watercolor painter, and I see him do a lot of these kind of um, backgrounds in his work. There we go. Okay, so we're going to let that dry and you can imagine you can keep doing layers on top of this. You know what I mean? So let that dry and we'll move on to the next one. So very easy to do and just start layering over this because it's already got this dimension of the, the background in there, you know? Okay, so our next one, we're going down to this one here, and we're going to continue on with our shapes. Got a little bit of water on it. Taking this one, which is the Versatile size 8, and I'm going to take a complementing color. So let's, we did this with the purple. Let's go with the blue intense since I have this out. We may as well. Do everything we can do with these. I always like to mix a little bit of them together. Like, so I'm going to take a little bit of the purple that I have laid on here and a little bit of the blue. And now I'm going to add shapes. So over here, we can kind of mimic this shape with a little bit of that and then over here I can mimic my shape again so you can see this is a really cool background you know like you could paint words over this and because it's using some of the purple and some of the blue, it's actually, you know, it looks good because it's bringing in some of the colors, you know? So here's where I've just kind of grabbed a little bit more of the purple and mixed it in there. And I'm going to make some of these sides a little heavier just to make them a little more interesting. And I'm mimicking this shape again. So all of these, if you notice, they're getting darker, but it's still nothing that can't sit into the background, right? So literally, I mean, even if I wanted to bleed this, I could, I could let it bleed a little bit, you know, and do, and do a little layers. It doesn't have to be perfect. It can be more watercolory. You know, you can even paint in the shapes a little bit with some transparent, some transparent lavender and that kind of even looks really really good you know uh, but as long as you keep it in the light or you know almost mid-tones you will be able to really just keep adding layers until you get to what is going to pop out so this is a really really nice background to have and if you want like more of the um, of these little splotches then you can take just your brush water down and then let them dry if you want them to be uh, just you know a little more kind of like bokeh effect then just tap some clean water over them they don't have to be 
just like that, you know? And that even makes a really interesting background. So you can see like, and then if I just, I can even start smudging, then you can take some cloth and, and start drawing it out, you know, and it just make it rough, make it like interesting with texture, you know, and this is so, so fun. It's original. It's fun to do. You can do this with your kids and you can make cards like greeting cards. You could write all of the like personal messages on it you can put it in your journal and like this is where you write your diary information or your travel maybe put a photo over there there's just so many cool things you can do with this background and build on it even paint a beautiful flower on it when it's dry all right let's move on to the next one so this is our multicolored background so it's got lots of texture you see where it went it did a really nice uh, job in giving us both granulating texture and also some you know kind of like tie-dyed effects right it's still wet though so I guess we have to wait till that one dries but we'll wait till this one dries I knew this one was going to take a while this one's dry so let's go to this one okay so here I'm going to show you what it looks like to add um, layers over this so I'm taking a little bit of my lavender. So this is the ultramarine violet mixed with the blue. Some of my green is starting to seep into it. So huh. I should have used one of the others. Making it a very, very light wash. And well, I have to move the camera out of the way so that you can actually see what I'm doing. There you go. Okay, so the next layer is going to be built over this layer. So I'm using a complementing color. And I'm going to start just adding in more of these beautiful leaves. Now, if you keep it light enough, when it dries, you can still write over this or paint something over this. So again, it's a great background. You know what I mean? If you make, you can go darker. If you make it really dark, then of course it's going to start contrasting with whatever it is that you want to put over it. But by making it really, really light, I have a situation where, you know, it almost looks like a relief print, you know, the key is light layers because when you don't have the light layers going for you, I've got a little bit of blue on this. When you don't have the light layers going for you, then you create something that's just too busy and too contrasting, but see how it's working now because everything is a very, very light layer. And I literally could fill the entire page because it's such a light layer. Um, I've actually done this with leaves before and it looks really good just getting darker and darker and darker as you go. It looks so, so pretty. So you might want to play with it and play with the shapes because this is a great way to do, um, you know, like that negative painting look, but in not such a confusing way because this is your first layer. You could even do like a light wash first and then do the pink and then do the purple and then do blue over it, you know? Um, if I wanted to add another layer, then I would take a little bit of my blue and purple together and when it's dry, go just a little bit darker, you know? Um, you can even go in an opposite direction if you want to. 
some of these aren't dry so it's definitely not going to work it's we have to wait till it fully dries first but you get the picture isn't that fun it's really nice to do and it's so easy and it's relaxing really relaxing okay this one's dry so let's go to this one man this one's never going to dry <laughs> Okay, so I got it in position. So I have three different sizes in my flat brushes. I wish I could get more sizes in this one because I love it, but I also love the Neptune brushes. They're amazing. So what we're going to do is we're going to take, um, I'm like literally out of room here. I'm going to take just the blue color with a small brush and I'm going to start laying in Hopefully, I'm on the other side of the camera, so it's a little bit difficult. I'm going to lay in some of these shapes, just a basic. Flat verticals. One stroke is really the best if you can evenly. There we go. Then take the next size and add a little more purple to it or whatever color that you're still working with. I really need to do something about the screen because I left it in there. Okay. And where these are not, you're going to, I'm going to start adding pink. Add a different layer with a different size brush. I think you know where I'm going with this. And the idea is just to give it definitely one stroke because when you have to do more than one stroke, it gets a little busier, you know? So you wanna try and just have it on your brush and do one stroke in the color. Mixing in a little more blue and a little more um, lavender as you go through it. I'm going to put in some little odd, odd details in here because you don't want all of these looking the same. And I think you're going to start to understand what this is. So I'm using different layers right so some of them are a little darker than others it's okay if i go over the blues with the other color because they're complementing colors everything is kind of made up of uh, the other color and as i start to add layers you're going to start to see things change And as I come more into the foreground on some of these drier layers, I can get a little darker. Cool, huh? So this is going to be um, our strongest, our stronger layer in the front. It's kind of difficult. It's actually easier on larger paper because my brushes are bigger. 
But this is just a sketchbook. So remember, this is going to be like um, how we would decide on what we're going to paint and get some ideas for painting moving forward. I have to say this ultra intense. It's really beautiful and it is so intense. I love it. You know, it really does take over though. So some of the areas you can do, um, I should have put that green somewhere else. Some of the areas you can paint purple, you know, whatever the color palette is that you're choosing. Some of them you can paint uh, the blue. You can even mix the colors. But see how this background is building now with the lighter colors in the background and then like the the more thick colors, but I'm allowing them to bleed into each other and I'm kind of just encouraging these different shapes, but at the same time, I, I don't want to make them look all the same. So I'm kind of keeping in mind what buildings would look like. Um, at this at this size <laughs> and of course just to keep it in the beginner perspective it's it's basically like a one point perspective we're not going to do a two point or a three point perspective because um i think just vertical and horizontal lines for today is good we'll do some perspective sketches coming up very very soon But see how, depending on how much water I put in my brush, um, I'm really able to, to kind of build up the layers of the structures. This also works with a card. I actually prefer the card because I can control the paint and the lines. I get even tighter vertical lines. But this is just a, you know, a nice rough way to do it. So I'm painting right over this one because I love the granulation and the one behind it and I want to encourage it to bleed a little bit and the fact that it's a different color it actually is you know you can see the difference between the two now let's switch to my favorite brush because I love this brush this brush just does this so much better you see what I mean it's like a one touch situation and it's just done it allows me to do layers and just kind of go crazy this is why I wish I could get this brush in multiple multiple sizes because it'd be so fun although I have to say most of the time when I'm doing this style I am actually um, doing much larger sheets of paper so it's fine it works out good but you know for you guys if you wanted to use this kind of a brush in your sketches because you can see how great it is it's just you know I can't say enough good things about it look at it just it just makes everything better right it makes a it makes the job so easy so of course as I got more close now I'm starting to add even more intense color and if you feel like it's just too intense then simply just you know back off the wash with a little bit of water and just dry it off on your towel You can just push it back to where you want it back husky. So you see how I built up that nice, those nice little textures um, using colors and some water and shape, but you have this nice background and then you have your nice foreground. And again, it will dry a little differently. I just really love the look of these colors together. I think it's, they're so pretty together.
And this is just a little last minute layer I'm adding in because I really like the um because I didn't really put a, a layer in between, but this brush at lets me just pretty much do whatever I want. Cool, huh? I love doing stuff like this. This is this is one of my favorite painting, but I think you guys could pull this off even if you're at a beginning level. You know what I mean? It's really not that hard to do. It's just layering. I'm just going to clean up this bottom part a little bit. Beautiful. And I like how it's kind of misty in there, you know? It looks really good. Okay, so is this dry yet? Ah, finally. Finally. A little bit dry. Okay, so over this beautiful background so now we have this kind of abstract background right and you're wondering what can I paint over something like that well let me show you so I'm going to take my ultramarine pink which is just this color that's in there but a little more intense and I'm going to grab a little bit of blue and I'm just going to do a multicolor flower. And look at how pretty that looks. This is great for if you want to do like greeting cards. And all it is is two colors on the brush together. This is the Escoda Ultimo size 6. I feel like this one works great for this because it holds enough water. You literally can paint this entire thing. So pretty. Isn't that beautiful? I'm going to put a couple of little leaves here. Okay. Now I'm going to grab my uh, green that has been hanging out for so long. I think I need actually a little darker or we can just mix the green. Let's just take the green and the blue together. It's perfect. Now the versatile is much better for very, very fine lines, but this will work. But isn't this pretty for like just to do a project with your children or to do custom little greeting cards for your friends or just like get well cards or something, you know, this is just such a pretty little background. And then even if you just like to paint flowers, you know, this is a great background. So if you know what color flower you're going to um, be using, literally, you can you can do this because you already know like if I was going to paint the the blue and the purple flowers or pink flowers I could use a very light version of that wash with its complement so you can do two tones on the back and that just allows me you know to do a beautiful background that's not going to compete with the colors I'm using here so you you do want to use your sketchbook and maybe take the three colors that you're going to be using like the green the pink and the um the green the pink and the blue and let them all mix together and see what they look like over it because i know that the hooker's green like does a decent job over the pinks and it over the blues i know what it's going to look like you know i know it's not going to like uh be something i'm going to hate so therefore i can even go transparent with this and it will work out um but I already knew that it would, right? So my point is, is always test going into these things and, 
Yeah, and you should be okay. You should be okay when, you know, as long as you just do a little sample when you choose your colors. But isn't that fun? I love that. I think it's really cool. Okay, so let's back off a little bit and see what we've got here. So now we have the beginning of a painting right here that if you want to hang out, I can finish this painting while we're here. The um, This is a really great a greeting card or a way to create something special for social media where you put the words over it you can use like you know one of these black ink pens and write the words over it or just take a picture and now you have a great background to you know write on or type on on your computer and I love that because it's a custom made background you know nobody else will have it it could be a signature logo for you for all of your Instagram photos for that month you know this is another great thing to do we started with that uneven wash and then we added some buildings in the background and then just got darker as we came forward this of course is lovely and now at this point we can paint anything over it you can do a much larger shape over it you can put words over it you can use it as that background idea for social media make greeting cards you know anything really that you want to do because it's light enough and layered enough or you can just make it into a painting and keep painting over it and then this was just so easy to do to get that effective background all right guys so if you want to stick around while i paint this here then by all means you are welcome to stay with me and i hope you enjoyed the video so Let's get painting. So this is my uh, Escoda Versatil size four. Favorite rigger ever. Love it. Tapping into my hooker's green. So this is lemon yellow and this, you know, holds over, goes over the, um, the blue just wonderfully. These are all Roman Schmal paints. This is ultramarine. You can see how now having those trees in the background just worked out great. Still working with my ultramarine. This is ocean blue.
a little bit of lemon yellow again. Grabbing a little bit of my Quinn Magenta. little bit of the yellow again. A lot of times, um, you know, it's just about understanding your paint colors and knowing what kind of effect you're going to get when they mix on paper and that's just what you're seeing me do here is you know just kind of play and allow this to mix on paper so that i get a really cool effect <laughs> that's that's just where i'm at so hooker's green was um one of the colors that i used and i'm gonna mix that in with just a little bit of the blue and just kind of Continue on with my palm tree a bit. We've also, remember, got the ultra intense on my palette. So we want to put that down here so that you remember. Mixing Hooker's Green with ultra intense. And I'm just going to, you know, drop it in in a couple places. Perfect. All right, there we go. A quick little fun, exciting landscape. Very easy to do and just a lot of fun to do because we've already got the background in there. So we did the wash of the ultra intense blue and then let that dry. And then we took the hooker's green, a very light wash of it and did the palm trees in the background. And then I came forward with just some foliage, some flowers and, you know, two crazy fun palm trees. And there you go, guys. All right. So we got backgrounds and all kinds of levels of experience, um, depending if you want something really easy or something a little more professional or something a little more in between. We got something for everybody right here. Thanks for subscribing to my channel and I hope you had fun. Happy painting. Don't forget to join me on Facebook and share what it is that you painted just recently. I also want to know what you think of the new Roman Schmall colors that I got. I think they're lovely. They're so nice to paint with. Look how pretty this is. All right. Have a good day. Bye.